uh, a good day to all. Uh, thank you for joining the lecture, uh, China's Quest for World Class University Status, Critical Reflections. Uh, this is Kaho Mong. I'm from Ningnan University in Hong Kong. Uh, I'm truly honored uh, to have received the invitation for providing uh, my critical rethinking and thoughts about uh, the world class university uh, movement around the world. Uh, as part of the Critical Internationalization Studies Network uh, seminar series. And I would like to share with you today about uh, what happens in China, especially in the last uh, two, uh, two decades or so, when Chinese university has been uh, actively uh, questing for world-class university status. So in this presentation, I would like, like to you know, review about the historical context for which uh, the um, quest for world class university movement happens in China. And I would like to share with you about uh, the impact and also uh, the policy implications when universities in China have tried to enhance their university uh, world class status. So, this is a brief outline of my talk today, a brief introduction I just gave. and. I would like to review about the history and also the policy context uh, for China's quest for world class universities and what are the major national strategies being adopted by Chinese governments in making the university more competitive globally, especially uh, for promoting the world class university status. And after presenting to you about the policy context and major strategies adopted by Chinese government, in enhancing Chinese universities' world class performance, and I would like to reflect upon the achievement and challenges. So I think the quest for world class university status uh, is becoming not only popular in China, but it becomes a very popular trend around the world, especially when people talk about uh, university rankings, no matter what uh, ranking uh, you know, exercise we are talking about, there are quite a number of prominent uh, commercial company organizing global university tables. And Chinese government also see uh, lead table as part of the uh, performance indicators, if you like, to measure about the performance of Chinese universities. The whole idea of uh, questing for uh, world-class university status in China is not only about uh, the enhancement of university's performance, I very much see it as part of the uh, strategies about adopted by the Chinese government for globalizing China's project uh, and strengthen its uh, soft power uh, in the uh, new environment. So um, in what way the government in China has tried to enhance Chinese universities' performance, I think there are three major aspects. Number one, uh, in investing and also uh, investing in the manpower for producing scientific paper in, in international publications. Second is about investment in research and development R&D. So if you look into the investment of Chinese university by the government or other non-government sources, it's really astonishing about the amount and extent of investment. It shows about the strong commitment of the Chinese government in transforming Chinese university. And another area about improving uh, the status of Chinese universities to engage university professor and students uh, for the international learning and international collaboration. So if you look into uh, this particular chart and it's also about the reform in China's higher education sector in terms of teaching and also research and, and, and also uh, learning, student learning, and definitely, I think Chinese uh, university, just like other university system, in particular in Asia, has faced uh, the massification phase of development. That's mean the rapid expansion in terms of the higher education enrollment, uh, because the Chinese government realized about the importance of preparing a more younger generation. They should be uh, well prepared for higher uh, degree with higher education. So expansion in education, in particularly in higher education, uh, has become an uh, uh, increasing uh, popular trend uh, in China. So since 1990s, China's national strategies for 
establishing world-class university status has been uh, featured by the three uh, major aspects. Number one is about the strong central government planning with importance and the increased importance of local government's contribution to. This is uh, talking about the co-establishing uh, world-class university through the central government support and planning and also local government's uh, financial support and initiative. And there's also role differentiation among universities or higher education institutions uh, in uh, China mainland. So uh, for talking about the, uh, the strong Chinese central government planning, you can see the Chinese government has rolled out different form of schemes. The whole idea is to select a few university, particularly I think the national or the public university, given them a very strong concentration of funding support to groom some uh, disciplines area uh, for making them globally competitive. Because China is so big, so many universities they are properly funded. And so the government has to be very strategic and also selective in, uh, in finding those university and giving them special uh, arrangement in order to groom them to become globally competitive. So I just highlight a few here, the 211 project, 985 project and double world first class university plan basically are uh, uh, having the idea for concentrating or funding and of the selected area of university being groomed to be globally competitive. So the policy and funding not only coming from the government in the central area, the central government uh, plans, but also being uh, echoed by the local government's uh, support in terms of the funding support. And you can see a differential treatment across university in different parts of China. Why? Because China is big and they must be very selective and also identifying a few university being groomed to be uh, globally competitive. So uh, the role differentiation be also because of this contest, universities and higher education institutions in China have become uh, some kind of different differential about their roles and also uh, performance. So what are then? the achievement and also the challenges. Of course, when you look back about the uh, investment in terms of funding and the special schemes that I just outlined uh, above uh, to groom a few universities to become well cast, we certainly see about uh, achievements because universities in China, uh, as revealed by ranking system, become more uh, highly ranked, especially in Asia and also uh, the problem would be about a more, more standardized you know, definition about first class and uh, a world class university. Because no one can tell what does it mean about how to define it world class, but actually uh, it has uh, come out with a lot of impact for uh, Chinese university. So if you look into the Chinese mainland university of the top 500 world university ranking, uh, comparing about uh, 2004 and 20, 18, this is an increasing number of Chinese mainland university being rated as a top 500 world universities. And also in the ARWU ranking in Shanghai also shows about uh, the composition of higher education has become even stronger uh, in terms of the ranking again. And in the last two decades, Chinese university has attained significant achievement in benchmarking especially when we measure about the global university ranking, no matter we are talking about the Shanghai Zhao Tong one or the one by Times Higher Education or the QS Asia, also world ranking. The rise of Chinese university in global ranking partly stem from the rapid development of research capacity and scientific publications. And the success of which uh, clearly reveals about the investment and a very strong determination of China University to perform well. So if you look into the investment in R&D, comparing China uh, with other uh, jurisdictions, it shows that, of course, US is still the number one in the world, but R&D investment and Chinese government has catching up, has been trying to catch up with the EU. And so from 1998 and 2018, because of the investment, and strong determination we can see in some major discipline, Chinese uh, international publication from Chinese universities or Chinese professors in the mainland university has increased. And based upon the citation analysis, China's scientific rise can be primarily attributed to the STEM discipline 
and medical science with humanity and social science discipline making comparatively less significant contribution, which uh, is a, a, a result revealed by our recent publication. And the Chinese university that rank high in global rankings are primarily those funded by uh, the 211 or 985. That means those universities are a selected field being funded by concentrated funding by the government. So this is a trend showing about social sciences when compared to all subject area, but definitely showing about an increasing trend in terms of scientific publication, no matter they are in the hard science or long stem subjects. What's then the implication? So we highlight to you about the achievement in terms of scientific output and also the R and D performance, making the ranking higher for universities in China. But certainly there are a few uh, impacts because when we are talking about universities, not only for uh, publications internationally alone, university has core business for education. So the impact on university governance because of recent policy for differentiation has led to both homogenization between research university and also stratification between these and also the rest of the HEIs in China. You can easily imagine for those university given the very special treatment and support, they become well cast, but how about those university, they do not or they have not received a similar level of support. So the overemphasis on international benchmarking in terms of ranking of research or publication has led to a potential risk of over standardization of performance measure. As I mentioned, universities should be differentiated in terms of roles, but in terms of measurement by the government in China or this kind of you know, uh, overseas ranking agency, they may uh, produce a consequence of an over standardizing performance measure. The crash of global ranking certainly affects government funding allocation and the strategies adopted by the university and academic behavior and decision of stakeholder in higher education be affected. And despite the dissatisfaction of university management with the growing influence of global ranking on university governance, I think the global reputation raised in higher education and university rankings indeed uh, significantly affect university governance. You can imagine if you were uh, the president of university or vice chancellor, certainly ranking come to you every day, no matter how you may disagree with that, but you know, it becomes a kind of euro pressure on university management and government. You may, uh, you know, affecting about the deployment of resources and also attention given to university performance. And, the, and it certainly also reinforce the intensification of competition through the global ranking exercise in university, likewise lead to a possible positional arm race in higher education and financial cost which is, could be the extreme form could uh, produce a very unhealthy competition among universities, not only in China, but across different parts of the world. And another major aspect is about the teaching and student learning. When university put more, uh, so much emphasis and energy on ranking, and certainly uh, the energy be channeled to research output, but not necessarily focusing about student learning. This is a pity. Universities, uh, the existence is not only for, for doing research, research should inform teaching and learning. So we have to ask ourselves as educators to what extent a university being ranked high, whether student uh, in these kind of so-called high ranking university, do they have the world class learning experience? And whether the quantitative expansion of Chinese higher education could ensure high quality graduate meet the rapid social economic needs of the local and global labor market, especially when we are facing about uncertain futures. The COVID-19 pandemic has definitely, uh, you know, alarmed, uh, give us, uh, alerted us, you know, how, how far universities are ready to produce a good environment for preparing students, our graduate for uncertain futures. Then we have to ask ourselves again, uh, the value of university ranking and the unnecessary pressure being put on university professor and presidents, uh, they, they may direct their energy for ranking without thinking about uh, sufficiently about student learning and teaching. The quality of teaching and student learning was questioned when university professors and teachers are under huge pressure to engage in international reach and publications. So I think uh, it would be something that we have to look into, but I think the Chinese government has recognized about the issue. So they also look into the quality 
education dimension. Another area of impact about the ranking is about academic professor and tradition. And Marchinson, Simon Marchinson, I quote him, rankings are becoming an end in themselves without regard to exactly what they measure, whether they are solidly grounded or whether their use has constructive effects. So the desire for rank ordering certainly overrules all else. So there is also little doubt about most ranking schemes indicate precisely what they claim to, where elite people are funded by elite people to teach elite people knowledge for elites. What university ranking do not indicate, however, is where and how education functions as a practice of freedom for the excluded majority. So are we doing education justice? Are we producing education for those people? They are less fortunate. So are we supporting about the UN agenda for 2030? That means education for all and promoting inclusive education. So the performance measures adopted by different university ranking system are biased towards the Anglo system paradigm. So if we inherit uh, closely about this criteria, you may damage about uh, the local culture, uh, the damage about the unique uh, functions and also the role differentiated roles of the universities. By neglecting to carefully analyze the lesson from best practice identified in the West, I think Chinese university may encounter potential challenges of neo colonization with Western values and practices being uh, weighted heavily when shaping about the university development in terms of our pedagogy, in terms of the performance of uh, measures, and also in terms of the development of universities. So this kind of indulgence in global university ranking could detrimentally affect academic freedom and institutional autonomy, especially when university leaders and academics primarily focus on global reputation ways. So we must be very uh, careful when we are seeing about the ranking and don't take the surface uh, meaning of the ranking at all. So becoming extremely instrumental in the ranking games would inevitably undermine academic freedom and creativity in the critical assessment of the ranking fever. We must be careful about that. So I want to conclude uh, my talk by highlighting a few key points for consideration. Number one, uh, what we are doing today uh, we have to repurposing about university. University is not only uh, for existing in terms of rank, rank wanting for the, uh, the race for ranking. And if we are excellent, but without a soul would be really uh, um, a very a poor development for university. We are questing for excellence uh, with a soul. This is, we have to ask ourselves whether we do justice for university education. And we have to ask ourselves excellence for what? request for university status, world class status, and for whose interest. And we may come to uh, the result confronting about university being stratified, and those students, they cannot get into the so-called world class university, would they become a second class and third class citizens in the country or globally? So together, we must uh, work closely together in collaboration, in reflecting upon critically about the impact of university ranking on university's purpose. And our core business is education. So I think university existence is for education for all and also producing higher quality education and in supporting about UN's call for inclusive education. And thank you very much for joining this lecture. Thank you.